So I made Reverse Eye in Unreal 4 or Othello or whatever you want to call it. It's nothing complicated, it's just a min-max function and we get the move, best move from the min-max function and play it, basically. Um, and if I were to show you what's happening right now, if we try to hit play without any multi-threading, um, well, it actually doesn't start because we get errors in the message log and it thinks that we're in an infinite loop. So if we were to go to our project settings and increase the loop count uh, by, say, two zeros, and we try hitting play again, it waits for a little bit and then it decides on a move and it starts playing. But you'll notice here on the FPS, it sort of freezes and then it links to that red one because it's really small FPS. FPS while um, it's thinking and we it sort of freezes up like that. You might have noticed it's freezing like that. Not great. Um, so I thought to myself, well why not just multi-thread it? Because that seems like an obvious solution. But when I looked online for um, how to multi-thread stuff in Unreal, in Blueprints, uh, none of the answers really worked uh, for me, honestly. If I were... Some of them said to do something with a delay, with a duration of zero, and apparently this would make it not multi-threaded, it would make it um, a latent action, which I don't really know what that means entirely, but uh, if we were to do that, do a delay of zero, it still doesn't really do anything? I don't really see what the point of doing that was, honestly. It still freezes up and it acts exactly the same as it did before. Um, there's our freezing and if... come on, let me stop. Okay. Um, the only reason I was able to stop, by the way, is because I have this delay 1 over here, during which time I can actually stop it. So, obviously that was an issue. Um, I've also seen some people suggest using something with a timelines tick. I don't really understand how that was supposed to help us multi-thread stuff, but it's... yeah, moving on. So if I couldn't do it in C++, I mean, if I couldn't multi-thread in Blueprints, I figured, well, I guess I'd have to do stuff in C++, and I don't want to do that, because, nope, if you understand C++, you're probably not watching my videos, so I'd rather do all this stuff in uh, Blueprints, especially the min-max function and stuff like that. Um, but I figured, well, what if I could just do some C++, like very, very small amount of C++. I'm talking like 10 lines of code. It's not actually 10 lines of code, but at, uh, it might be like 15 or something like that. But it's very minimal, and um, I actually got it to work. So if I were to connect to our multi-threaded multi function instead of our min-max function, and this is just calling this right here, um, instead of playing the move like we were earlier, right after our min-max function, we set it as a uh, the AI's move and see if the AI's move is valid in our event tick and then play our move. Because if we just play our move directly out of this function, I think it also multi threads playing the move, which is uh, not great because it sort of sometimes does random weird stuff, which is not cool. Um, but yeah, if we were to try doing this, press play, the game starts right away and the um, FPS is, never goes down. It's, it's, you never see that red part and it never freezes up while I'm. Um, well, it's playing while it's thinking, because it's multi-threaded. You know, that's the advantage of multi-threading stuff. Uh, the AI, by the way, um, black is going to completely dominate white. I have black set to seeing four moves ahead, and white is set to seeing two moves ahead. So obviously white's not going to do very well. Um, yeah, four and two. But yeah, you notice that white moves a lot faster than black does. Black takes its time to think, while white is just like, whatever. I got this, and you you don't got this white. I'd hate to break it to you, but whatever. It's an AI. I don't I don't care about its feelings. Oh, actually, some AIs I care about, but that's that's where we're going to science fiction stuff and stories. Moving on, that actually has nothing to do with any of this. Um. So if you, by the way, if I were to stop right now, it might actually crash the engine because if you stop in the middle of the implementation I'm using right now, it uh, it's not great. So I'm gonna wait for this game to finish, and there we go. Player one won, and it completely dominated white. Um, I think it's because I never told the AI, or I mean, I never told the multi-threaded function to let stop or abort or whatever Unreal calls it. I'll figure that out later, maybe. But anyways, if you want to see the actual code, here it is. All we have is um, a interface. 
So anything you want to have this event multi-threaded function, it's a actually part of our interfaces in our class settings over here. Uh, multi-threaded right there. It won't show up over here in our functions because it doesn't return a value, so it just thinks it's an event, which is you know fine. You have to right click and say uh, event multi-threaded function right there, and it'll show up. Anyways, and all this is is uh, three lines of code here: public u function called all that stuff with a function name. Uh, multi-threaded function and that's all it this is all we have in our actual interface and in our um, this is a blueprint function library and this just has one function that is a it's a public uh, blueprint callable function that calls call multi-threaded function taking in a object that's going to be whose uh, function is going to be called and then we have to, and then we uh, create a new auto um, delete async task with multi uh, type of multi-threaded task which is this up here and we tell it to start the background task or start its um so this start background task will basically call this function over here do work and it uh tells the object to call its multi-threaded function um yeah that's about it uh when we create the multi-threaded task we pass in the object and then the threaded and then the task calls the object's uh multi-threaded function and that's actually all there is to this. Um, I'm not sure if anybody's already posted this anywhere uh, when it re in regards to multi-threading and blueprints, but even if you don't understand blueprints, this is really easy to copy and paste. <laughs> like, really easy. You just right-click in your content browser, new uh, C++ class, and choose interface for the interface and blueprint function library for the function library. That's that's about it. Uh, you also have to include the multi-threaded or sorry, you have to include the multi-threaded.h which is the uh, interface uh, header file you made over here and async slash async work.h which is the um, which holds our non f non abandonable task uh, class that our multi-threaded task inherits from but I mean, that's all there really was to it. I still have to figure out um, how to make it not crash when you stop the game in the middle of running it, but yeah. Just for fun, I'm going to let this AI play against itself with a difficulty of 4 to 4. And you'll see that white actually takes um, you know, quite a bit longer to actually run its task now. But, you know, it's playing smarter than it was in the um, when it had a difficulty of 2. Um, I believe in this game, Black will actually win by, oh, what was it? E it was either 2 or 14 points, I don't remember which. But it actually takes a while, so um, never mind. I'd rather not just let this video run on longer just for you to watch my AI play against itself, because that's not what this video is about. Anyways, if that helped somebody, I hope it did. Um, and if this solution was already out there and I just wasted my time making this video, um, Sorry for wasting your time. Uh, oh, this is slowing down, not because of the multi-threading, it's because I clicked somewhere else and Unreal was like, alright, well, that's not what you're focused on right now. Uh, Unreal is not the application you're focusing on right now, so we're going to dedica uh, dedicate less uh, CPU time or whatever to Unreal. I don't... It's That's not exactly accurate, but, you know, it's close enough. Um, yeah, if I click back in Unreal, you'll see that the FPS went back up, and if I click away, it's goes back down just because of the way our uh, editor settings is set up. Editor preferences, I believe it's um... Plug it project settings? It was somewhere over here. Well, it doesn't matter. Um, oh, this is a horrible video, but whatever. I'm just going to stop it now before it gets any worse.